Hey, what's up guys? Mason Wakefield here and today I want to talk about my top five things that not only do I bring to every wedding, I would recommend to every wedding filmmaker, um, but also that I don't go to any wedding without. And so these things are not necessarily the most expensive or the coolest or the biggest things, not really the most technologically advanced. Um, these are really just things that I've found really work with my filmmaking and that's something that you'll find out through this as I go through these things. A lot of this has to do with who you are as a filmmaker. So if you know who you are as a filmmaker and what stories you're wanting to tell and how you're wanting to tell them, that will actually help you determine what are the best resources for you. And all of these are tools that I actually use to help me create and tell the stories that I want to. Um, so with that being said, let's hop into the first one. The first thing that I bring to every wedding is the exact mic that I'm using to record myself right now. It is actually the Tascam DR10L. This little microphone setup um, has been probably one of my best investments being it's I think $169 on Amazon. Um, you literally can't go wrong with it. It has a micro SD. It records to itself, um, just takes a AAA battery, so I just travel with some AAA batteries on me, and it just continuously records until you shut it off. It's so good. Um, it lets you record at two different levels. So I, for one, have never had this microphone peak on me because I have it set at two different decibel levels, one being a certain decibel level, and the other is minus 12 of that. And so, this mic is great. It picks up all the audio. Usually I just put one on the groom and one on the officiant and then it picks up the bride. So they're super great, super cheap. And audio is so essential to storytelling, especially in wedding films. There used to be a lot of just kind of slow, almost moving slideshow-esque type wedding videos out there. Um, but more and more, we're starting to get away from that and starting to actually create things that are more like stories, more like narrative storytelling, films, movies. And so it's really essential to use the couple's audio, whether it be letters that they write to each other or personalized vows, whatever it may be, the pastor's audio, but it helps tell their story beyond what just the eye can see. We want to hear, we want to feel, like we want all of our um, senses to actually be activated as we're storytelling. And so this is a really great tool. It hides super well in the lapel of the jacket. And um, this thing has not failed me yet. So hopefully it doesn't anytime soon. But for the time being, this is one of my favorite tools that I use every wedding day. My second item that I bring to every wedding is small and is simple, but it's this Tiffin Black Pro Mist 1 8 filter. I actually have my 1 4th filter on my lens right now. Um, this thing is just, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. I have a style of filmmaking that's more cinematic, kind of a little bit more movie-esque colors. Um, so it's a little bit more film-like looking. So I want my highlights to be a little bit softer. I want my shadows to not be so harsh. I want my images to be less contrasty. And so it really blooms the highlights. So like you can look back there, that light is looking really good in it. And then you have like this light and it makes the highlights a little bit bloomier. I have a bright light on my face, but what it's actually doing is it's making this harsh light of my face come off a little bit softer to the camera. And so what I found is this enables me to get the film look out of any of my lenses. And so like right now I have a newer, newer lens on my camera, but I have this filter on top of it. And what this filter does is it almost makes this lens have a vintagey look. Um, and so this lens is great. It just gives you more of that film like look, which I feel like a lot of people are chasing after these days. The third thing on my list is lighting. And so lighting comes in all sizes and packages. So the first thing I'll show you guys is this big boy. I use this light at every wedding. I put it in the corner of the reception. If there's rehearsal dinner, I light the speeches with it. Um, 
This is the Aperture 60X. This thing is a beast. Like it lights up the whole dance floor. You don't have to worry about any lighting um, outside of you. I actually have brides reach out and ask me if I can bring it because they want their dance floor to be lit with it, um, which is awesome. So anyways, I love this light. This is super good. Just put on a light stand or a C stand in the corner and it lights the whole room. Um, a lot of times as wedding filmmakers, we have to be flexible. And so I, what if, you know, we're in the middle of a field and the generator isn't working or the band doesn't have enough outlets. Well, that brings us to our next light. And this light is a uh, very small, but very mighty. This is the Aperture. I'm not sure what it's called to be honest with you, but if you just go to Aperture's website, you could find this anywhere. Um, it's really bright. And as you can see, you can kind of see that halation bloom that this uh, lens filter is giving us right now, actually. So that's that's kind of what it does. Um, but this is super great for um, any reception if you can't get lights to work. That's, that's one of the ways that I use this light. Um, the other way that I use this light is on exits. So a lot of times people don't choose sparklers, which help you with light, but they actually choose like rose petals or I've had bubble exits. I had a water balloon exit recently. So you don't have lighting. And one thing that's really hard with not having um, any light is usually they're leaving at night. <laughs> and so if you don't have a light, well then you can't record the exit very well. And so that's what this light's really good for. It just has a cold shoe mount on it. So I just put this on my camera, just screw it on just like that. And then it's on there. The one drawback I will say to this, and the reason that I like these other lights that I use is it is a little bit obvious when you're recording someone, it almost feels like paparazzi. So they're like on the dance floor and you're like wanting to get them having fun. And then they're kind of like, oh, like who's recording me? Like, I don't, you know, they kind of get awkward. And so that's kind of why I like these bigger lights is because they light the dance floor from the corner. And so I can kind of sneak around and get that. And then the last light that I have up here that's actually lighting me right now is the Amaran 60X. It's by Aperture. This light is phenomenal, guys. Honestly, this light's a little bit more expensive. I don't know if I'd recommend it over that. That light is incredible. Um, I'm using it to light me right now because it just gives me like the best even lighting here. Um, and it comes with a lot of stuff. It has a Bowens mount, which is great. Um, not all lights have that. And so you can mount all types of adapters onto it and it's super awesome. My fourth item might seem uh, a little bit obvious, but it is my Sony FX3. Oh my gosh, I love this camera. I've been shooting with this camera for about two years. And to be honest, I was a Canon guy at first. Um, just started in Canon, I had a friend that had a Canon, and so I wanted to shoot the same thing as him so we could shoot together. And Geez, I finally made the switch over, got rid of all my lenses, got this camera, and this thing is crazy. As a wedding videographer, you should not be able to do the things that you can do with this. It has dual native ISO, which I could hop into that more later on another video. Leave a comment down below if you want me to hop into what that actually means. Um, but dual native ISO basically means that at 640 ISO and at 12,800 ISO, this camera looks the exact same. So it's clean, no pixels, no grain at 12,800 ISO, which if you don't know what that means, that's crazy bright. Um, so if a room is dark, I can almost just use like moonlight. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, actually, they just shot a movie on this camera, The Creator. It's a new movie that just came out and I just saw that the other day, which is pretty phenomenal that they shot a movie on this camera. The color science behind it is beautiful. Honestly, I've had zero complaints. That's the reason I still shoot on it. Um, and honestly, I'm still looking to get another one soon. So it's pretty awesome. And um, a great pairing with it is actually our next item. And this is our fifth item. Um, this is the Peak Design Strap. This thing is uh, pretty awesome. For those of you that shoot handheld, I would highly recommend this. Uh, if you don't know the pros of shooting handheld with a strap, basically there's two ways to stabilize your footage. 
in handheld motion and to not make it shaky and jittery. One way is to make your camera super heavy. And so a lot of us can't do that because it just costs so much more money to keep adding things to our camera. And a lot of us just want to kind of run and gun, right? Run with it, just do whatever, take it out of the bag, snap a lens on, go from there. And so this strap is awesome because you can rotate in between going handheld and gimbal super quick. You take this, take this strap. So here's the strap. Here's the camera. You just snap it in and there's one side to hold my camera and then I do the other side go ahead and do it so there's that strapped completely in and now let's say <clears throat> now let's say I want to be done with it I'm ready to go gimbal just pop this out boom that one's done and then boom that one's done Pretty awesome, pretty quick. If you are anything like me, I hate dealing with these things right here. It just takes me forever. So that strap is just like a super handy way, an easy way to make sure that my footage looks really stable, but that way I can also shift into gimbal movements immediately after. And so that's five guys, but I do have one bonus item and this is kind of like a quirky item. This is something that I use personally for my filmmaking, but it's more of a concept rather than an item. And, uh, and that is this VHS camera. Um, and you may be asking why VHS? Everybody's kind of going super eight now. I know I'm almost like behind in a way, but honestly, the main reason that I bring this VHS, um, there, there's really two reasons. Number one, people feel way more comfortable not in front of a massive lens sometimes. So sometimes my best way to make people function and act normal um, is with this guy. So I'll bring this out. All of a sudden the bride's at ease. She feels like her dad's filming her and she's two years old again. <laughs> you know, it's just fun, comforting. Um, another reason that I love this is I actually use it as a prop. So a lot of times, you know, let's say we have the bride and the groom and they're hanging out and I'm trying to create a raw, real moment that's not staged. Like, okay, they're going forehead to forehead, but why? Or they're, they're running through the field, but why? So we actually want to have a reason behind our storytelling and not just have people twirl in a field for no reason. And so that's where this comes into play is we can have the guy and he's like this and he's looking through the lens and he's like telling her, hey, what's today? What's going on? And as we have this footage, I'm recording them from the side. So then we have footage of him recording her and then we have the actual raw footage. And it all of a sudden just makes it feel nostalgic, homey, and almost like them, right? Like all of a sudden it gives personality to their film in a way that before it didn't have. Um, and it gives them an opportunity to actually be themselves. So that doesn't have to be a VHS. That can be anything that's a prop that makes people act natural. So. I think it's really essential to just do something fun like this. So anyways, that's my list guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will link everything below if you want to check it out. Um, and with that being said, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know any questions that you guys have for me. Um, shoot, if you guys want to ask me anything and I'll respond in the comments. So thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best. I really appreciate you. I feel so grateful. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week. All right, peace out.